In the previous episode, we used loop tiling to improve the reuse of data in matrix vector multiplication problem. The solution with loop tiling works well, but parameters of tiling must be tuned for every platform, so this approach is not fully portable. Now we will discuss an alternative approach to memory optimization based on recursive divide-and-conquer algorithm. In this diagram, the panel on the left explains how to traverse the data of matrix A and vector B in the tiled algorithm. The bigger rectangles represent tiles, and the smaller rectangles represent elements within the tiles. Matrix A we read tile by tile, moving tiles from left to right and from top to bottom. If you look at how we use vector B, you will see that we use a strip of vector B several times, then we move to another strip, use it several times, and so on. When we reach the end of vector B and the end of the first row of tiles in A, we go back to the beginning of vector B and to the next row of tiles in matrix A. To further improve locality in B, we could change the order of matrix traversal and move in A from top to bottom and then from left to right. In this case, we would use each strip in B the maximum number of times and move on to the next strip. Interestingly, it improves performance on the CPU, but degrades performance on Xeon Phi. For a more portable solution that improves performance on both platforms, we have to apply a different algorithm. Now let's look at the panel on the right. It illustrates a recursive algorithm of reading matrix A. The algorithm works like that. We look at matrix A, and if we find that it is wider than it is tall, we split it vertically and recursively call matrix vector multiplication with each of the half matrix. Then, we look at the left-hand side of matrix A and find that it is taller than it is wide. So we split it horizontally, then split vertically, then horizontally, and so on until the submatrix is small enough. The idea is that if we split up an object to a size small enough to fit into the cache, we'll get data reuse. However, if we split it up some more, it will not hurt because the calculation will still remain in cache. As a consequence, we do not have to tune the tile size, or in this case the recursion threshold, to carefully. There is not one value, but a range of values for this tuning parameter in which performance is optimal. Additionally, we can parallelize this algorithm across threads using tasking, and because recursion is self-similar, or symmetric, we will have good data locality in each thread and load balance. In the case of matrix vector multiplication, data locality in matrix A actually does not matter because the matrix is read from memory once, and it does not matter if it is cached well. Data locality for B is what matters, and it turns out that the cacheabilities algorithm does well in this area. To implement parallel recursion, we use OpenMP tasks similar to the example that we saw in episode 4.6. The recursive function takes the matrix A and the vector B and returns the resulting vector C. Those may actually be parts of A, B and C inside of the recursion algorithm. The function also takes the size of the matrix, which may be smaller than the original matrix size when recursion starts. An additional parameter LDA is the leading dimension for matrix A. This parameter does not change inside of recursion and it is equal to the physical length of rows in the full matrix A. Inside the function, we check if recursion has reached the threshold. If it did, we perform the matrix vector multiplication with two nested loops. If matrix size has not yet reached a threshold, we split the matrix either i-wise or j-wise. When we split, we recursively call matrix vector multiplication on the submatrices and subvectors, placing one of the multiplications into an OpenMP task and waiting for this task before exiting. We do not show the complete code on this slide, only about half of it. The complete code you can find in the supplementary code that comes with our book. But even that code is a simplification that assumes that the matrix dimensions are multiples of the recursion thresholds. If they are not, we will need to include remainder loops in the code. See this paper for an example of how remainder loops can be used. Xeonphi.com slash papers slash transposition.
Performance results show that the cache oblivious algorithm improves the matrix vector multiplication rate compared to the best styled algorithm that works for both platforms. You can also verify that it is less sensitive to the values of two parameters, so it is more portable across different architectures. For more information about cache oblivious algorithms, see those papers. In our book, we discuss additional techniques for memory traffic optimization, including first touch allocation and loop fusion. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below the video. Thank you for tuning in, and I really hope to see you in the next episode.